Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Andy with Run DNA. I am with my good friend Ellen Davis, coming from Iowa. Um, so she is a registered dietitian and a board certified sports dietitian. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about off season nutrition, uh, both from the runner side as well as the medical professional and the coach's side, that kind of stuff. So it's a really broad topic, but we're going to try to spend a, a little bit of time on some specific topics. So Ellen, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and all that fun stuff? Yeah, of course. Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Good to see you. Yeah, and absolutely. So, um, so yeah, like you said, my name is Ellen Davis. I'm a sports dietitian um, here in Iowa. And uh, just a little bit about my, my history and how I got to this point. Um, I was a multi-sport athlete in high school and you know, just did it all because I went to a small high school and could, we had a great opportunity to do that and um, figured out probably my junior, probably my junior year that running was going to be my future. Um, and so got a little bit more specialized in that and had a really cool opportunity to run at the University of Missouri on the track and cross country teams. And um, so went there and, you know, was expecting great success as I had in high school. And <laughs> to be honest, um, I had no idea what I was doing from a training standpoint or a fueling standpoint. And I always, I always joke with no shame. Um, it's when the wheels came off from <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a fueling standpoint. <laughs> um, I was eating the wrong foods and the wrong amounts at the wrong times. And I was, I ended up hurt a lot. And if I wasn't hurt, I was sick. Um, and so it was just really heartbroken. Like it was just really a struggle and um, was also figuring out what I was going to do professionally, um, you know, to make money for the rest of my life and, and realized that uh, becoming a dietitian and eventually a sports dietitian was where my passion was. Um, I wanted to help athletes avoid making the same mistakes that I made and, you know, still continue to make every once in a while now. Uh, no one's perfect. <laughs> we'll get to that more of that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, so went through the dietetic program there at the University of Missouri, graduated, started my career as a dietitian, and then have worked my way into working um, primarily with athletes. And of course, runners being my, my special wheelhouse, because, you know, I just have a special place in my heart for, for all runners. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So again, I, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about off-season nutrition as we're kind of rounding the corner. Most cross-country seasons have, have wrapped up and, you know, we're getting to those kind of winter months and kind of looking towards the track season, be it indoor or outdoor season. Hopefully we have track seasons and all that fun stuff. So, um, but we're going to kind of talk about it from the runner's perspective and then also kind of what we can do as medical professionals, coaches to kind of, um, you know, help our runners, you know, start down that right track for, for off-season nutrition. So, Elle, why don't you talk about some top priorities on the runner side? What we can uh, look for for our runners, uh, top priorities for kind of off-season nutrition compared to like our on-season stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So I always say that off-season is the best season to make any adjustments from a nutrition standpoint. Yeah. Um, in season, you know, we, we can tweak a few things, but I usually like to steer clear of making any drastic changes just because um, intensity is high, you know, miles are, miles are long, and um, it's not really the best time to be making any, any sort of big adjustments. So I always say, you know, use your off season. Um, you have a little bit more time. <laughs> you have a little bit more mental capacity. You've got a little bit more wiggle room from a nutrition standpoint to kind of play around with some stuff and really get in tune with, um, you know, your, your hunger, your satiety really gives you an opportunity to um, develop that really positive relationship with food when you don't have the added stress of performance going along with it. Um, and so I always like to use off season as an opportunity to really build that strong foundation from a nutrition standpoint. But um, I would say the top priorities for my runners um, and athletes in general is health, <laughs> staying healthy, both physically, um, immunologically, and mentally. Um, yeah, and that's yeah, the that's the key because you can't do what you love to do if you're not healthy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you're going through off season, you start the season injured or, or not ready to go. And what's the point, right? So yeah. definitely need to, um, like we said, make it a priority and then, you know, talk about some of these things that, you know, Ellen's uh, you know, mentioning and, and kind of on the other side of, as a medical professional, as a coach, 
Um, how can we encourage our athletes to start that process of thinking about nutrition as, as a top priority? You know, we're always looking, our runners are always looking to stay in shape. What can we do during the off season to make sure that we're rolling into the next season um, as, as good as we can? You know, how can we help our, our athletes be in a good position to have nu good nutrition during the off season? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, I truly believe that medical professionals and coaches are, are in the best place to help their athletes, because even um, as a sports dietitian, I don't, I don't see my athletes every single day, like med medical professionals and coaches do. So um, you guys are, you guys are top, top priority. And so, yeah, yeah I love, I love having conversations um, with you guys about this because um, you're my gatekeeper and I love that. But because nutrition can be um, so personal and sometimes very triggering, especially yeah. for runners specifically, um, I definitely encourage coaches and, and medical professionals to um, to kind of go in open with open-ended questions with their runners. Ask them how they're doing. <laughs> Ask them, you know, how are you recovering after your longest run of the week? Um, did you have something to eat before your hard training session this morning? How much water have you had today prior to training? And one of my favorites, um, on a scale of one to five, one being not, motiva mo not motivated, five being incredibly motivated, how are you feeling about training on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Yeah. If you start to see a trend of runners kind of um, really gravitating towards food and nutrition, and if your conversation goes that direction, use that as an opportunity to kind of, you know, poke around a little bit. Um, get your runner involved in the conversation in the journey towards nutrition because um kind of coming at it abruptly can be very kind of like i said triggering for some athletes um and so kind of coming at it from you know more of a friend perspective um and you know not making nutrition feel like a punishment or something that you know is just a, another thing for the runner over um over their off season can be super valuable. Um, I always like to say, I like to give my, my athletes, my runners, the, the tools to empower them to make their own decisions. Because we all know as, as medical professionals and, and healthcare professionals that um, you, know, you can be a lot more successful if, you're, if your client, if your athlete gets there on their own, with your help, of course, but you, you can't tell them to do it and um, expect the greatest success. And so, yeah, kind of kind of helping them, helping lead them to the water, so to speak. Yeah, I love that. I mean, the empowering part is is so much better, right? That's, uh, we see that on the rehab side too, right? If we can kind of encourage them to take ownership in their own you know, recovery, and I would assume same on the nutrition side, we, they learn a lot more and they learn things that they can take with them and, and have some more success with that. So I, I love that. Um, now is, well, let's talk a little bit about like the, the athlete that's going into the next season that maybe they didn't have any injuries, they're going in healthy versus that athlete that struggled with some injuries, be it like a bone stress injury or, you know, a joint, uh, joint issue um, from the fall season into the, into the spring. Is there a difference between the two as they're looking at an injured versus a non-injured athlete, something to, to think about there? Yeah, I think I think the main difference there is is motivation. <laughs> what's the underlying current? You know, what what's going to make that athlete tick and and help help get them committed to nutrition as being a tool in their toolbox. Um, so for the healthy athlete, of course, you know, not to say that there's not motivation because there absolutely is, but um, you know, trying to help them understand that. Um, you know, there's always, there's always some tweaks and adjustments that you can make um, to improving performance, improving uh, recovery, and reducing your risk of future injury. Because yeah. um, most runners, no matter how long they've been running, have experienced some sort of energy uh, injury. It's not, yeah, it's not <laughs> when, it's, it's not when, it's if, or it's not if, it's yeah, when. If it's when, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. It's when it's going to happen, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, for, for the athlete who um, did experience an injury throughout their season, you know, I like to help them understand um, that root cause 
of the injury, you know, like what, what was causing that? You know, was it, was it a lack of fuel? Was it, you know, it could be a variety of different things. Of course, I'm typically focusing on the nutrition side, um, but helping them understand the why that goes along with the what, again, helps encourage that commitment to the overall process. So. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Some great little tips just to differentiate the two, you know, and that motivation factor is always a key thing. So that's, that's, that's a cool thing to think about as you're looking at the different type of athletes that you're working with, you know, during this off season. Now, as we go from off season in season, what do we start to look at in terms of the transition? So um, do we start with the caloric intake? Do we, you know, as our timing different as we start to transition more to in season training, we're picking up intensity, we're looking at races, what things can we look at in that transition time? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you kind of hit you kind of great precursor there. Um, as an intensity increases, fitness level improves. A lot of athletes won't realize that their resting metabolic rate or the amount of energy that they burn just at rest, doing nothing all day long, that increases as, as your lean muscle structure um, improves, you burn more calories. And so the need for more food is, is apparent it comes um but you know i think we see the opposite sometimes um athletes get closer to their season and they start to you know get um more you know either restrict restrictive or structured you might hear um with their intake and stuff and and that can kind of lead to to disaster you've had a, a great off season and a great lead up to your season and then you get there and and you stop putting gas in the tank and um that that can be a challenge so um kind of knowing that that can sometimes be the case um but then also on the on the other hand realizing that as intensity ramps up mileage ramps up your um your appetite cues may be suppressed because with higher intensity training um you just experience less hunger and so that can be tough for athletes because although um although they know that the need for fuel is there they're just plain not hungry and if, sure. if we haven't used off season to kind of establish these habits and really take a focused look at pre-training fuel recovery, how to do that, when to do that, and just developed that kind of like second nature fueling. Um, it makes it a lot tougher in season. And so that's why I like to use off season um, to develop those habits and make them um, just second nature. And so that uh, when they get into their season and they know that it, the need is there, that it's, um, that it's just happening. Awesome. That's great. Now we were talking a little bit before we jumped on about this obviously being a crazy year and a little bit more of an uptick in maybe some eating disorders and that kind of stuff. So can you talk a little bit about how, um, you know, these changes with uncertain times, maybe stress, anxiety, how those can play a role in, in our nutrition and, and ways we can help our athletes kind of overcome some of those issues that with just this uncertainty and this crazy year that we've had um touch a little bit about on, on that side of stuff as well yeah and you know we we were talking about it before um but i i'll just share personally you know since since this year of of craziness i've seen a, a huge uptick in disordered eating mm -hmm. um eating disorders and just just general energy deficiency um, and just a, a lack of control is kind of the, the underlying current around this. But um, yeah, I think we're all at least maybe vaguely aware of or familiar with Red S, relative energy deficiency in sport. Um, and so I think, you know, kind of taking a look at, at that, what that means um, and knowing the, the performance um, indicators of that. So keeping an eye out on chronic injury or persistent injury, um, seeing your athlete uh, chronically ill or um, anxious or depressed or a big change in mood is a big, big indicator of, um, of kind of psychological, you know, disorder around eating or, you know, vice versa. Um, you know, if, if you're working with, with female um, athletes, you know, talking to them about their menstrual cycle, you know, are you getting a period? Is it regular? Have you lost your period um, over the last, you know, months or in season versus out of season? That's your, your primary indicator of um, 
that something might be wrong if if a female athlete has lost their period. And so, you know, I, some some coaches are are overly comfortable talking about that with their athletes. Some aren't. Um, but kind of you know, challenging yourself and kind of uh, figuring out if if that's a conversation that's appropriate with your athletes is is step one in my opinion. Um, and of course, with with Red S, you know, the beauty of it is it, it now involves everybody involves involves males, females, um, able-bodied and disabled athletes, and so there's just a lot of um, performance indicators that you can kind of take a look at with that. And like I mentioned before, you know, kind of asking those open-ended questions. And, um, you know, just, just getting to know your athlete on a, on a, you know, semi more personal level, uh, because, because nutrition is so personal yeah. and it can come from, um, a lot of different ways. Um, I think it's just really, really valuable there. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of really good stuff. I mean, again, the, the off season is so important. So I think we can take a little bit of ownership in helping our athletes and, you know, seeing some of these signs of, of issues or, you know, helping them, you know, start this process of making nutrition a priority. And I think um, that's something as coaches and medical professionals, we need to do a little better job of, you know, helping in all aspects more than just the training or just the rehab. So I think, you know, this was a really good conversation to have. And, and I think it's uh, something that people need to uh, take a little more seriously, uh, you know, as we're working with our athletes. Any other things that you want to like touch on real quick or any uh, final points that you want to, you know, throw, throw out there for, for some people that are watching this? Yeah. You know, I, I always just um, encourage my, my athletes, my coaches, you know, the, the teams that I work with to, to challenge the idea of, good and bad when it comes to food because food is food <laughs> you know um yeah. i am a strong believer that all foods fit it's just a matter of finding the right time and place for those foods yeah. you know like I've, like i've mentioned multiple times throughout our conversation food is personal and you know food is fuel but food is also fun and you know finding finding ways to incorporate food in both ways is is so 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 valuable because you know we work with athletes um on a daily basis and and we know that they are um extremely motivated driven they're going to do whatever it takes to to be their best we also know that they're not going to be an athlete their whole life you know they may be an athlete in some way shape or form for you know a lot of years which is so cool that's the beauty of of sports and athletics however they're for surely going to eat the rest of their lives and developing that really positive relationship with food and giving themselves the oh the confidence that empowerment factor to to make um balanced choices on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis just opens up so much opportunity for for someone as a human being not just as an athlete so um yeah. you know and and you know like i always say you know athletes are are extremely driven you know but avoiding the idea of striving for perfection when it comes to nutrition and aiming for progress rather than perfection choose one or two things that you want to focus on um from a nutrition standpoint get really good at those things and then if you want to focus on a couple of other things do that but but rather than you know beating yourself up for not being perfect um kind of just take take that that opportunity to to make progress and feel good about it yeah. Yeah. There's not a one size fits all nutrition plan for all distance runners, right? <laughs> oh, no. Nope. Good point. Yeah. If you like something, keep eating it and, and, you know, figure out how it works best for your, your training and all that kind of stuff. So I love that. Give yourself a little bit of leeway with your nutrition, yeah. right? Yes. And, yes. You know, giving yourself permission to, to eat some things that you like and, and, you know, figure out what works for you, I think is, uh, again, kind of is back to this empowering thing for our, our runners. Um, you don't have to be perfect all the time. So yeah. that's awesome. I, and I think this is a really important, uh, like I said, a really important topic. And, you know, Ellen is an awesome source of information and we trust her. And I think we'll, we'll send out her, her contact information if you guys have any questions on, uh, especially on the, the coaching and medical professional side of how to communicate with your athletes via you know with these topics of nutrition you don't not everybody needs a 
you know, a, a degree in dietetics or anything like that, we can, you know, there's some really easy things we can start talking with our athletes about. And, you know, we're, we're coming together with Alan and we're, we're putting together some edu- education and some courses to help coaches and medical professionals learn a little bit more about these like key topics that we should have be having conversations with with our athletes. So we'll be um, announcing some of these courses that we got coming out here pretty soon. Um, but again, Ellen is our trusted source for all of our uh, nutrition um, and all of our advice. So um, reach out to her if you do have any questions. And um, again, it's it's awesome to have you on. It's it's really fun to be able to have these conversations with you and talk about running and um it, it was a great I, I appreciate you, you taking some time and and uh jumping on the call with me yeah absolutely i appreciate you know the opportunity and and you know we've been talking about nutrition and running for for years now yeah. and it, there's just no greater joy for me as a sports dietitian to than to see an athlete you know, start to put together the pieces of their own puzzle and reap the benefits of it in the end it's just it's there's no there's no feeling that matches that and so yeah like you said you don't have to have a degree in in dietetics to to talk about food but you know if you can if you can start if you can plant that seed and if you as a medical professional or coach realize like okay you know this is probably more appropriate for a dietitian or you know someone with a little bit more training to to kind of take that conversation that journey further then then that's what I'm here for but I want to help empower you um, to feel just as confident as I want your athletes to feel about food and nutrition as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ellen. I appreciate you being on. Yeah. All right. We'll see you. Have a good afternoon. All right. Bye.